hypothesis. If you watch uh, an animal um, grow from a, a single germ cell, there's a directional growth toward functional integration at higher and higher levels of organization. Mm, um, and, uh, well, maybe. I won't, I mean, I'm not quite sure I like that way of putting it, but, but um, I think I see what you're getting at. Okay. I mean, there is that, as a matter of fact. You do observe that in the life of an organism, and we actually well, know... Well, you know, you have many more brain cells before you're born than you do shortly thereafter. There's a tremendous pruning. Is your brain more complex before you're born or after you're born? Development is not all in the direction of greater integration or greater, or greater complexity. In well, some regards, in some regards, it's well, simplification. Much greater, much greater functional differentiation. Much greater functional differentiation, and, 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 and integration, and correspondingly functional integration of, of differentiated things. Yeah, sure. Um, and it gets bigger, and it develops a nervous system and so on, yeah. and these coherent functional things. Yeah. Um, I would submit that if you step back and observed... Uh, life on this planet in time lapse, including not just the, the evolution of human beings, but the cultural, tech, including technological evolution mm -hmm. that led to where mm -hmm. we are today, mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, the process would look remarkably like that. Um, and in fact, you, you, um, you yourself in, in your most recent book, I noticed, uh, Freedom, uh, Freedom Evolves, um, say uh, there's a sentence something like, the planet is finally growing its own nervous system, us. Mm -hmm. And it's true. I mean, it looks like that, right? Yeah, and, and there absolutely. is a functionality yeah, about yeah. it. And you agree there's been a directionality about it. Yes. So it seems to me that to the extent that's the case, uh, th that argues um, maybe strongly, maybe tentatively, maybe barely. Who knows? But, but that is some evidence in favor of the, hy the hypothesis that natural selection in some sense is, is, is a product of design in some sense may have a purpose. No, I don't think that's a good argument. I think, I think it's, that remains an open possibility, but I don't think that the evidence that we have before us gives us any particular reason to think that it's more likely than not. Since the, the alternative hypothesis, namely that uh, natural selection happens because it can happen, and that's it. Not because it was supposed to happen, and not because there's a purpose to it. It happens because it can, and since it can happen, all of the design accrual that is the mark of natural selection happens. It happens. That's all you can say. Well, it certainly follows that it will happen if you have self-replicating yeah, material yeah, yeah. Um, and finite resources yeah. and so on. Um, but. A, it didn't have to be the case that there was that on this planet. In fact, it's still a little yeah. bit of a mystery how it came to be. B, all I'm really saying is, look, you can imagine natural selection uh, unfolding. Um, you know, it, I mean, uh, Stephen Jay Gould could have been right. It, it, it could be directionless and aimless, and, 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 and 99 times out of 100, nothing intelligent evolves, nothing complex evolves. But I'm saying that, uh, and, and if you compare that scenario with, with the alternative, which you and I both believe, that there actually is a probabilistic direction toward complexity and intelligence. I don't think that's inconsistent with, with the claim you just made that 99 times out of 100, 90, nothing, nothing intelligent evolves. Well, that, that's probably true, too. Well, but you agree that there is a probabilistic direction. I thought you said earlier, actually, it was, it was likely to lead to greater complexity and intelligence. No, over the long, long, long run, well, that's yes. That's what I mean. But I mean, in well, the same way that uh, most of the organisms that have ever lived on this planet died childless, and most of the lineages that have ever started off are extinct. Right. And so much more than 99 out of 100 of the lineages that have ever uh, evolved have b extinguished themselves without ever leading to intelligence. Well, well, so intelligence well, is, sure. is, the, is the rare thing. Yes, but it's still, this, give it enough time, it's very sure. likely to be created. But I mean, I, I think that works in, in, in favor of the argument I'm making. I mean, first of all, you said, you said tons of organisms die childless. Right, and yet you agree that they were designed by natural selection to, uh, to create to offspring. Yes. The fact that some of them don't yep. do it 
does yeah. it does it yeah. rule out that possibility? Secondly, the fact that lineages go extinct. Well, that's true um, in epigenesis as well. If you look at the sure. the cells that that you started out with, tons of them go extinct. And and what goes on inside your body is in, is more like a process of natural selection oh, absolutely. than a lot of people realize. Yeah. And one thing it has in common with natural selection is that although certain properties are very likely, I was very likely to wind up with eyesight, eyeballs, um, it, it wasn't at all inevitable which of my stem cells would be the grandfather of the lineage that led to the eyesight. And that's also right. true of yeah. natural selection. So uh, I just think that to the extent, I mean, I think we've agreed that, that, that observing uh, what is it, ontogeny, I guess is the term, or, you know, development of an mm -hmm. organism. Um, <clears throat> that does, it has its, its directional movement toward functionality by design, and that's, in fact, the hallmark mm -hmm. of design. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, to the extent that natural, that evolution on this planet turned out to have comparable properties, that would work at least to some extent in favor of the hypothesis of design? Mm. Um, to some extent, to any extent. Yeah, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll declare yeah. victory and go. Okay. Now we can talk about something else. Okay. Uh, because after that, it yeah. at least becomes an empirical question and, and something you can argue sure. about. Sure, yeah. Um, unfortunately, we only have one case to study, whereas when you're looking at individual animals, you can you have yeah. many more. Um, your, your book on free will, um, the the... You're framing uh, the issue of free will in a very, what will strike most people as an unusual way. People usually think of free will as opposed to determinism. Mm -hmm. Of course, by determinism, we mean the idea that basically the rest of, the future of this universe is inevitable because the universe is this mechanistic thing. It works according to rules. And in principle, if you understood the, everything about the state of the universe and everything about the rules that govern it, you could predict what happens tomorrow, and that includes people's brains. They're deterministic, yep. and so free yep. will is kind of an illusion because of determinism, because of the truth of determinism. That's the argument, traditional argument against That's free will. That's the traditional argument, yes. You're saying, I think you're saying that actually the two are compatible in some meaningful sense of both terms. Absolutely compatible, okay. yes. Well, so I'm just a compatibilist. There have been compatibilists for hundreds of years. Um, but I'm a little different from most of the earlier compatibilists in that I want to deny flat out a premise that you started with, that you mentioned yourself just a minute ago. You said the future is inevitable if determinism is true. Uh, first of all, I want to say that phrase, the future is inevitable, just doesn't mean anything. Um, we, we can't talk. The future the future is going to happen, uh, whatever it is. And that's true whether determinism is true or indeterminism is true. There's going to be a future. Now, in what sense could you talk about the future being inevitable? I don't know. What we have to talk about is particular events being inevitable and or particular types of events. And in order to see what the word inevitable means, you have to take it apart. And oddly enough, although the word trips off the tongue of everybody who writes about free will and determinism, uh, hardly anybody's ever looked at it. But, of course, what it means is unavoidable. I mean, evitable, inevitable, avoidable, unavoidable. That's all the word means. But now, to avoid something, this is something that an agent does, an avoider. You, so, don't, mean, you don't mean a literary agent here. No, I mean, I mean like Although a, sometimes they, they avoid. Yeah, sometimes they avoid. <laughs> no, I didn't have literary agents in my... I had... Uh, or secret agents, uh, although those are both agents. Uh, I mean agent in the broad sense of being uh, an actor that has some sensory capacities and some goals and that acts in the world to uh, accomplish its ends. Okay. Um, now, are there agents that can avoid things? Sure, tons of them, and in fact, the reason you have to look at free will from an evolutionary point of view is that's remarkable, but that there are agents that avoid things is a remarkable fact. And there's many more avoiders now than there used to be, and they're much better at avoiding than they used to be. And in fact, uh, it's as good as, as a definition of intelligence to be uh, an expert avoider 
to be able to foresee far into the future, to see things coming down the pike and to take steps in a timely way to prevent those bad things from happen, happening and in order to foster things that you want to happen. Uh, uh, we don't have a, a good uh, parallel word. Uh, what would it be? Enhancer? Uh, uh, probabilifier? Um, uh, there's, there's no... Uh, uh, we avoid harm what, and, we, and we try to get the good. Um, but, uh, but there isn't a, a single verb for, for what we do with regard to good things the way there is for avoiding mm -hmm. the bad. But now, that means that the whole concept of inevitability gets its meaning from the perspective in which, a perspective in which there are agents, in which there are agents that might want to avoid something. Uh, 